I have an incredible emulation project for your Windows PC. I'm going to show you how to set up and install emulators for 117 different game systems and retro computers, capable of playing over 100,000 games. What makes this even more incredible is it's all going to be done through one single download. Stick around because you're about to level up your emulation setup. One of the many great things about Retrobat is that it has very light system requirements in order to get things up and running. While some of the more advanced emulators for more modern systems might require greater hardware, you can get some of the 8 and 16-bit classics going in no time at all, even on light hardware. All of this is done through the power of Retrobat. It's hosted for you on the itch.io website and I have a link for you in the video description. On this page, navigate over to the red button that says Download Now and click on it. You'll be presented with the option to donate to the developer, which I've done. If you don't want to donate to the developer, you also have the option to click No Thanks. Just take me to the download. No matter which option you choose, you'll be taken to the Downloads page, shown here. The download for the most recent version of Retrobat is going to be at the top of the list. At the time of this recording, it's version 6.4.0. It's also great to see that the project's been receiving updates throughout the year. Come over to the link that says download and click on it. Just be aware that this is about a one gigabyte download, so it may take a little bit of time to get to your system, depending upon the speed of your internet. Once you've downloaded the Retrobat file, navigate to your downloads folder by opening a new instance of File Explorer and opening downloads. Inside the downloads folder, you're gonna find an executable file for Retrobat. Navigate to that file and double click on it to launch the installer. If you see a message like this pop up on your computer, you needn't worry. Itch.io is a highly reputable website for the homebrew community. If you see this message, just click on more info, then come down to the bottom where it says run anyway, and click on it to launch the application. You'll see a pop-up message appear in the middle of the screen asking you to confirm your language. In this case, it's English, so you can just click on OK to continue since English is selected by default. Essentially, the install process from here looks exactly like you would see on most traditional installers for Windows applications, but there's something super important here that I think you need to consider before you set all of this up as you're going through the process. When you get to the step that asks you where you want to install all of this stuff for Retrobat, you might want to consider, especially if you have more than one drive on your computer, not putting it on your Windows install drive. See, here's the thing. There's a lot of content that's going to be copied over to this in just a minute, especially if you have a large game library. If you plan to put a lot of games on here, or you plan to put really large games on here, like some of the games that are optical disc based, you might end up putting terabytes worth of content in Retrobat. I've switched over to the D drive here since this is an additional storage drive, but you can put this content anywhere that it makes sense for you on your computer. From this point forward, it's just a matter of smashing the next button until you get to the UAC prompt. Once you see this UAC prompt appear, click on yes to complete the installation. Depending upon your hardware configuration, give your system about maybe three to five minutes to complete the installation process. Once it's done, you'll see this screen. Now that everything's done, come down to the bottom right corner of this window to finish and click on it to close out the installer. Now that everything's installed on your system, you don't need this executable installation file anymore. Right click on it and click delete to send it to the recycle bin. For now, you can also close out this file explorer window and you'll find a shortcut to Retrobat on your desktop. Tempting though it may be, don't click on it just yet. Instead, go ahead and open up a new instance of file explorer and navigate to wherever you installed Retrobat on your computer. In this case, it's drive D, but wherever you installed it, navigate there. You're gonna find a new folder there called Retrobat. Locate that folder and double click into it. There are two key subfolders here to be concerned with. The first subfolder is called BIOS. I'm gonna double click into it here so you can take a look inside. There are some retro game systems or retro computers that require what are called BIOS files. These are operating system files that are required for those consoles or computers to operate. They'll need to go in this subfolder or even in a subfolder in this subfolder for things to work correctly. The best way to ensure that you have the correct BIOS files for the systems and computers that need them and that they're in the right place inside your Retrobat directory is to access the wiki shown here and linked in the video description. Each system's requirements as to whether or not they need a BIOS file and what types of game ROM files they can utilize are listed in this wiki. Since the 3DO platform is the first platform listed here and it requires BIOS files, let's take a look at this. I'm going to click on 3DO here so we can take a deeper look. 
If you scroll down a bit in this listing, you're going to find several useful things. The first one is what types of game content that you can use for each individual platform. It also tells you where to store those game files inside Retrobat's directory structure. Next up, if you have to have a BIOS file for the console or computer that you're looking to emulate, it's going to tell you on this wiki page for each individual console or computer which files are required. For example, the first BIOS file listed for the Panasonic 3DO FZ1 model is called panafz1.bin. Since I own an actual Panasonic 3DO FZ1 system, this is the BIOS file I'll be using to emulate games for it inside Retrobat. And as shown in the wiki, this file will live inside the Retrobat folder in the BIOS subfolder. Remember that some BIOS files are going to need to live inside a subfolder inside the BIOS subfolder though. So let's take a look at an example of that. Because I think if there's a place in all of this setup that people are most likely to get tripped up, it's probably when you're trying to emulate systems or computers that require BIOS files. The Dreamcast is a great example of this. So I'm going to scroll down through these listings here until I get to the one that says Dreamcast. Take a look at the details listings for Dreamcast. You're going to notice something different here than you saw on the 3DO, for example. If you scroll down on this page to the section that says BIOS information, you'll see that the BIOS files actually have to be placed in a subfolder inside the BIOS subfolder. So for example, you'll need to put them in the subfolder that says BIOS and then another subfolder that says DC for Dreamcast. Otherwise, if you just drop those BIOS files in the BIOS subfolder alone without the Dreamcast subfolder, things aren't gonna work correctly. Okay, now that you have the basics for how to deal with BIOS files and where they go, let's go back one level in the navigation structure back to the Retrobat folder. The second folder you need to be concerned with inside the Retrobat folder is called the ROMs folder. I'm going to double click into this folder here because there's something super important you need to be aware of here. These folders are pre-configured by Retrobat when you run that setup executable file. Retrobat is going to be looking inside these subfolders for your ROM content. So for example, if you have your ROM content saved in subfolders somewhere else on your computer, you can't use the names of those subfolders. You have to copy that content into these subfolders for your ROM content to be recognized inside Retrobat. All right, so let's do that. I'm gonna take this file explorer window and drag and drop it over to the right side of the screen and snap it into place because I like to copy content like I read from the left to the right. So I'll drag this window over to the right side and just snap it into place here. I have some content pre-saved in a folder called demo on drive D. So I'm going to open up a new file explorer window and access that demo folder. So here I've got that bio subfolder and a subfolder here called ROMs. I'll take this file explorer window and drag it over to the left side of the screen to snap it into place. Regardless of how you want to copy your content over, you're just going to be dragging from one window to the other to get it done. So for this example, I'm going to grab both of these folders one at a time and drag and drop them from the left side of the screen over to the right side of the screen to put them in place. Just be careful if you're going to do this, not to put these in one of these subfolders, but to drag and drop it outside of it so it gets into the root of the Retrobat folder. Otherwise, you're going to end up with your BIOS files in a subfolder in a subfolder, and it's going to make a mess that doesn't work correctly. I'll do the same here with the ROMs folder, since everything's already pre-configured in it, and I can just merge everything together. Now I'll close out the File Explorer window on the left, and close out the File Explorer window on the right to get back to the desktop. Now's a great time to connect a controller before you go to the next steps. I'm going to pair this 8-bit do Ultimate Bluetooth controller to Windows. It has Hall Effect thumbsticks and triggers, and even has a charging dock with an LED light. Once you put it in pairing mode and go to the Bluetooth application in Windows, you'll see a pop-up as a listing called Pro Controller. All you have to do is click on it, and the controller will now be paired with Windows and ready for use in Retrobat right out of the box. Excellent. At this point, you have pre-configured everything that I can think of that would set things up properly for you before you run Retrobat for the first time. Head over to the shortcut on your desktop and double-click to launch it. You'll be greeted by a random title movie each time that you launch Retrobat. Once the movie's done playing, you'll be launched into the Retrobat main interface. By default, the user interface plays music, which is really cool the first time you listen to it. If you don't want to listen to that music on repeat over and over every time you launch Retrobat, press the start button on your controller to access the main menu. There's a menu option here called Sound Settings. If you navigate this highlight down to it using the D-pad on the controller and then select it with the A button, 
you'll get a sub menu. In the sub menu, there's an option here and it's called front end music. If you scroll this highlight down to it with the D-pad and press the A button, you can switch this toggle from on to off. The music won't stop right away, but don't worry. All you have to do at this point is press the B button on the controller to go back and the music will turn right off. Then you can press the B button again to go back to the main interface for Retrobat. Along with the beautiful user interface for Retrobat, it literally takes care of all of the configuration for all of the emulators for you. All you've got to do is drop in those BIOS files and ROM files, pair your favorite controller, and all of the configuration, including using the controller, is all taken care of for you by Retrobat. A note about the user interface here. The systems that show up on the main menu of the user interface are directly related to which systems have ROMs in those folders. It's not so much related to BIOS because not all of the systems or retro computers need a BIOS to start with. It's more a matter of which folders have games populated in them as to which systems or retro computers are populated on the user interface. Back at the Atari 2600 system listing, I'm going to drill into this by pressing A. There are two games listed here, but neither one of them have any art, any video, or anything else associated with them. Here's how you can fix that. This website is called the Screenscraper.fr website. I have it linked for you in the video description. You'll need to register for an account on this website in order to use the Screenscraper service inside Retrobat. Select a username, enter the password and verify it, and enter your email address. Make sure the password that you use only uses alphanumeric characters and no special symbols. And be sure to record the username and password exactly as you enter it when you register on the website. Once you're registered, press the Start button on your controller to pull up the main menu. From the main menu, use the D-pad to move the highlight down to the listing that says Scraper and press the A button on your controller to select it. The first listing inside the sub-menu says Scrape From. Make sure that it's set to Screen Scraper. It should be by default. From here, scroll down to the listing that says Scraper Settings, then press the A button on your controller to go into the sub-menu. From here, you can leave all of these settings at their default settings and it will scrape all of the necessary art and video files for each of the pieces of content that you have set in Retrobat. What you really want to be concerned with though is making sure that you have the proper username and password entered in at the bottom of this menu listing so that you can access the service. Once you have this information entered, you can press B on your controller or select back at the bottom of the menu. If you take a look at the bottom of the menu, the last menu choice says System Included. See how it only says one here? You'll need to change this if you want to scrape for everything that you have installed. Move the highlight to this and press A to select it. At this point, you can manually go ahead and check each one of these by moving the highlight down to it and pressing the A button. Or if you want to just skip the labor pain to get to the baby, press up one time on the D-pad. It'll take you all the way to the bottom of the menu choices to select all, and then you can just select select all with the A button to pick everything. Once you've picked the systems that you want to have artwork scraped for, press the B button to go back. At the very bottom of this menu, there's a button here that says Scrape Now. Bring the highlight down to it and press the A button to start the artwork scraping process. Okay, here's the deal. The amount of time that this is going to take you depends on how much artwork you're scraping for how many games across how many systems. And I'm definitely not going to sugarcoat this, it's slow. If you're just scraping for a handful of games, it might take, say, 15 or 20 minutes. But if you're scraping for a large library, like I tried originally with 51,000 games, well, it could take days on end to download everything. Fortunately, you can let this process take place in the background so long as you keep Emulation Station and Retrobat open. In the top right corner of the screen, you'll see a progress indicator telling you how much artwork has been scraped and how much is left to go. It's not an indication of how many games are being scraped, it's how many pieces of artwork and assets are being downloaded in total. Once the scraping process is complete, press the B button to go back and you should now see video animations and sound for the games inside the individual categories for the consoles or retro computers. If you don't see them, press start, go back to the main menu, into game settings and refresh the game interface. This is a really great addition to the user interface to be able to see videos, but what if you want to be able to see other elements like box art, or game descriptions. This is where downloading new themes for Retrobat and Emulation Station comes into play. 
Press the Start button and you'll see a menu listing for updates and downloads. Bring the highlight down to it and press the A button to select it. In this submenu, scroll down to the listing for Themes and select Themes with A. You can choose from dozens of themes here that you can download and install to spice up the look of Retrobat. You can choose to download them one at a time, or you can download them all if you want to just grab all of them and scroll through the list of choices once they're already downloaded onto your system. Once you have the ones that you want downloaded, press B to go back. From the main menu, use the D-pad to move the highlight up to User Interface and select it with A. The very first submenu listing here is called Theme Set. If you press the A button, you'll see a list of all of the themes that you have downloaded, and you can select any one of the themes here to apply to the look of the user interface. I really like this one that's called Art Flicks all the way up at the top, and I'll tell you why in just a moment. So I'm gonna scroll up to it and select it with the A button. Once you select it with the A button, you can press B to go back and then lock in this change. The reason I like this theme so much is that it takes advantage of a number of the different assets that we just downloaded through Screen Scraper. For example, when I drill into Road Rash for the 3DO here, you'll see that the movie's playing, the artwork for the long box is down in the bottom corner, and there's even a scrolling description at the bottom next to the long box telling you about the game. Not all of the themes are designed to show you box art, and so using this theme in the video as part of the demonstration just shows you that the download process for the assets worked successfully. Okay, at this point, you've put in all the work. It's time to enjoy some gameplay. I'm gonna go ahead and launch Road and Track Presents the Need for Speed from the interface. By the way, quick trivia here. This was the first Need for Speed game in the series. One of the reasons this game makes sense as a test game is because not only does it have to launch the game itself, but it has to access the system BIOS in order to do it. And sure enough, the game loads and plays successfully. Retrobat really is much more than just an emulation Swiss Army knife. It's the centerpiece of one of the best emulation build processes I've ever seen. And if you want to learn how to play your favorite retro games on the go, this video shown on screen and linked in the description and pinned comment will show you how.